Hi there, this is Rob from Reason101.net and today I'm going to show you how to create an auto panner using Thor. This is actually a pretty easy procedure. Um, so what I have right here is uh, a single combinator which is going to basically be pl playing a patch um, and the matrix is what's playing the patch. So let's just listen to it. Um, I know my speakers are very crappy so I apologize for that. And um, I don't think you're going to be able to see or going to be able to hear the way that the panning works, but I can at least show you how to create it. So let's just quickly um, do, go through these steps. First, you're going to create a combinator. And then in the combinator, you're going to create a line mixer. You can create a small little line mixer there. And then underneath that, you are going to create a Thor. Let's say create a Thor. And then let's just expand it to see it. Okay, what you can do is you can initialize it. All you have to do is just move everything down to zero, deselect everything, deselect this, bypass that, turn the oscillator off, turn everything else off. I don't know if this really helps any by having all these knobs down, um, but if you want to save CPU, may as well do it the right way. Okay, so here we have an initialized Thor. And uh, what you can do is go down into the matrix section. And what we're going to do is we are going to use LFO2, which is this LFO over here. It's a global LFO. Everything that's in this light brown area is, is global. So you don't have to have anything running through this section here in order to get it to work properly and in order to get Thor running. Um, so the LFO2 is a free running LFO. And uh, we'll just put it up to the amount 100. And the destination is going to be our CV out 1. And uh, then what we're going to do on the back of the rack, we're going to go to CV output 1. And we're going to have that affect the first channel. And we're going to pan that completely. The other thing we're going to do, since we're not going to use Thor for any audio, we're going to remove those cables. And instead, what's going to go in through here is our original combinator. Uh, right now, it's going out to its own mixer channel. So we're just going to steal that and have that go through our little panning combinator. And we're going to move this into the first channel. So now we're all set up. Um, now let's turn it around and let's play it. Okay, and you can kind of see it over here. You can't really hear it, but you can see how the, um, the LFO2, this sine wave, is affecting the left and right channels. Okay, so we got that running correctly. Now, um, the other thing we want to do is we probably want to create some kind of a um, trigger to turn it on and off. So in order to do that, I'm just going to remove these names, these labels. Over here I'm going to call this turn pan on and then open up the mod matrix here and under Thor what we're going to do is we're going to on button one we're going to go down, 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 all the way down, 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 down. I love this long list. I just love it. Okay. You've got to go all the way down to where you see these destination amounts. Okay. This is your mod matrix area. You can play with the destination amount or the scale amount. What we're going to do is we're going to use mod one destination amount. We're going to select that. And we're going to move the minimum value up to zero and we're going to leave the maximum value at 100. So now what's happening is, I don't know if I can show this to you, but when I turn pan on and off, it's going to affect the amount down here. So it's going to affect that destination amount. So that basically will turn your pan on and off. Um, that's a way you can play with your CV and you can have control over your CV amounts. Okay. And uh, the other thing I want to do is um, I'm going to want to play with these settings. I'm going to want to be able to control the rate, the delay, the key sync, and the tempo sync. So over here, we'll play with the rate, and we'll assign that to the first rotary. 
So in Thor, what you're going to do for Rotary 1, you're going to go again, you're going to go all the way down, not quite as far this time. You've got to go down, 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 down. Until you see LFO2. Okay. And you're going to play with the LFO2 rate. And then Rotary 2, we'll assign that to the LFO2's delay parameter. So once again, you've got to go through this whole list. I know it's a bit of a hassle, but it's all worthwhile in the end. So this is now going to be your delay. And now let's, for rotary three, let's assign the waveform to this rotary. So just go all the way down again. until you see LFO2. And we're going to assign that to the LFO2 waveform. OK, now button 2, we're going to do this. We're going to assign the sync. So that's going to be LFO2 sync. That, that way it'll sync up to the tempo of the song, if you want it to. And doing all this is basically just so that you can control your, you can have all elements of your, um, of control over, over your LFO. And we'll just call it tempo sync. And over here we can even assign the key sync parameter. Again, we go down, 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 down. And there we go, LFO2 keysync. Okay, so now that you've got that all set up, what's gonna happen is um, I will turn on and off. I'll just see if this works. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the pan on. That changes your amount down here. Tempo sync is gonna turn tempo sync on. Key sync is gonna turn key sync on. The waveform rotary, you can change the waveform pattern down here. Um, the delay is gonna affect the delay rate is going to affect the rate and so once you've got that you can close this up and you can save this as your auto panner for auto panner and then you can use this anytime you want so that's pretty much how you use it So that's pretty much how you do it. Now, also, one other thing I wanted to show you quickly. Um, you could have taken the CV from Thor, and instead of assigning it to your um, mixer, your line mixer here, you could have actually assigned it directly. Um, and I can't really show this to you because the screen's a little too small. OK, there we go. You could have taken it and assigned it to the mix channel, and then turned up the trim knob there and assigned it to the mix channel of the actual uh, sound generating combinator. But if you did that, then what's happening is you'd be externally routing your, um, your combinator, your auto panner, which is not necessarily the greatest way to do this, simply because when you saved it and then reopened your combinator again, this cable would disappear. It'd be like that. And you would have to reroute it every time. So this way, you're assigning it to the line mixer, which is... Um, applying it to your sound, which is then going out to the, the, actual, um, the actual mix channel for this combinator. Um, so that's pretty much how you, how you do it. That's, that's the way you do an auto panner. Hope you've enjoyed this, and uh, hope you come back to visit me at reason101.net. Thanks a lot.